Hey, welcome back to Starfield. I'm Sajani, and it's a lovely day in New Atlantis. Just really pretty. I think. Not sure if the sun's going down or not. Um, maybe it is. I don't know. Is it? No idea. Um, I think it's morning. It seems like morning light. Okay, so after some consideration, I did decide to. Uh, start a faction quest. Um, my scient... <laughs> Someone is jumping. <laughs> Not sure where they came from. Uh, anyway, uh, my xenobiologist character here is probably more inclined to uh, be a um, UC citizen more than a free star collective citizen uh, they drive a pretty hard bargain for new recruits I certainly couldn't say no <laughs> yeah so we're going to uh, go ahead and uh, talk to Commander tu Tuala I think his name is and uh, see what he's got to offer for us hey Sarah's friend you come to enlist at long last start earning your stripes with the Vanguard So, what sort of work would I be doing if I enlisted? Vanguard work is as needed. When we've got jobs, we'll make them available to you. But the work itself, well, it runs the gamut. Sometimes you might be hunting down hostile ships on behalf of the UC Navy, or you might be called up to help the Science Division clean up some invasive species. Hell, we've even been asked to help take on the occasional Terramorph. And sometimes oh. we just need cargo support. Not every job's glamorous. The Vanguard only gets called in for the ones where there's a chance of seeing action. Wherever the UC needs us, the Vanguard is there. Okay, so what exactly is the Vanguard? We're the United Colonies Volunteer Fleet. Any captain can join, regardless of origin. Get to fly your own ship and earn credits as you help the people in the most distant reaches of the United Colonies, all while earning your way to UC citizenship Put in the time, and citizenship is guaranteed. So why would I want to become a UC citizen? Well, other than becoming a member of the greatest faction in the galaxy, you'd get access to discounted services on any UC world. Credits to help you get on your feet. You'd even be able to buy property right here in New Atlantis. Citizenship unlocks it all. And signing up for the Vanguard is the fastest way to earn it. Hmm. All right. Well... Let's go ahead and go for it and tell me what I need to do next. Well, all right. Take the elevator down to the Vanguard Orientation Hall. You can get started at any of the registration terminals. The system will walk you through the rest. And if you've got any questions, I'm happy to answer them. All right, that seems simple enough. All right, Barrett. Um it's gonna go down to the elevator. The Vanguard Orientation Hall. Let's see what we got going on. Hmm. Very shiny. Okay, to reg register for your examination, please select Enlistment Agreement. No, any outstanding UC bounty must be paid before proceeding. Alright, <clears throat> by joining the United Colonies Vanguard, you agree to perform necessary services for the United Colonies that could place you in serious danger, resulting in harm to your craft or yourself, up to and including death. In exchange, the United Colonies Vanguard agrees to compensate all captains according to their experience level and the difficulty of the task requested. 
All applicants will be required to earn a satisfactory grade on a simulated combat flight. Ugh. Combat's not our thing. Um, ship combat. Uh, successfully complete a probation mission, probationary mission. Upon the, the completion of both prerequisites, the United Colonies Vanguard agrees to sponsor your citizen, citizenship application and guarantees the granting of United Colonies citizenship once sufficient time or acts of valor have warranted it. Do you agree to the above commitment and wish to initiate your journey with the United Colonies? Vanguard. Yeah. Explore the orientation har hall. Uh. Registration accepted. You may now proceed through the historical displays in the orientation hall, or continue on to the examination. Uh. Okay. I guess we're going through this door. It's the only one here, other than the exit. Oh. The end of Earth. In 2150, humanity learned the Earth's magnetosphere would collapse sometime in the next half century, eliminating all life on the planet. Decisive action was required, but the secure transport of an entire civilization would demand a new kind of cooperation, a new kind of courage, and a new kind of union. Thus, in 2159, the United Colonies were formed to make that journey possible. Just one year later, the Galileo, the first of many colony ships, touched down here on Jemison, beginning a new era of human history, the age of the United Colonies. In that moment, humanity changed forever. Nothing would ever be the same. They must have been scared out of their minds. No doubt. Is this it? I can't touch it. Hi. What? One of the displays broken? I'll call up your maintenance. Um. Yeah, this one's broken. Oh, okay. Here's more. New factions. Rise. From their foundation, the United Colonies strove to provide all their citizens with opportunity, security, and peace. But there were those among the UC that still wanted something more. Independence. So in 2161, the UC issued the Centaurus Proclamation granting UC citizens the right to settle distant worlds and form their own sovereign powers. It wasn't long before the first new faction, the Free Star Collective, was formally organized in 2188, later followed by House Varun, revealing themselves to the universe in 2230. Well, this is certainly an interpretation. What do you mean, an in interpretation? Oh, pardon me. <laughs> was that your stomach or mine? See I you guess, later. I guess he was just making a comment. Okay, so this is the House Varun. Free Star Collective. <laughs> oh, here's a little thing here. It was only in 2230 that the faction known as House Varun first made contact with the rest of the settled systems. Founded by the passengers of a colony ship that had left New Atlantis and disappeared four decades earlier, House Varun was a faction unlike any other. A theocracy dedicated wholly to the beliefs of its isolationist founder, Janan Varun. House Varun initially made overtures of peace towards the rest of the settled systems. Hmm. They claimed their only intention was to spread the word of their god, the Great Serpent. 
but none could have guessed that this worship might take the form of a bloody war. The Serpent's Crusade. Wow. The Free Star Collective was initially founded in 2188, when the citizens of Aquila banded together with the pleasure city of Neon in mutual defense. But in 2194, after the deployment of a UC Medical Star station in orbit around their world, the citizens of Narion also requested to join the Collective. The resulting rise in tensions between the Free Star Collective and UC culminated in the Settled System's first intergalactic conflict, the Narion War. Despite a decisive victory by the UC, the colonies permitted the citizens of Narion to join the Collective, forming the basis for the fiercely independent union that persists to this day. Wow, oh, that didn't quite make sense. If they declared victory, I get, yeah, maybe it's some sort of revisionist history going on there. Oh, my. I'm not going to read all of that. Um, oh, I see. Despite winning the war, the UC found themselves in an in unenviable position painted as a brutal aggressor, even in their home systems. So in the spirit of unity and lasting peace, the UC agreed to the demands of the of the Free Star Collective and the Neri the Narion settlers whose collusion triggered the conflict in the first place and handed over Narion to the collective as they requested at the start of the hostilities. Including the clinic medical star station, which we visited earlier, um, and creating the Free Star Collective as we know as as we know it to this day. In return, you see demanded two concessions. The first was payment for damages done in the form of mineral rights on multiple wars ac uh, worlds across the galaxy and the second more significant demand was that no great faction may ever colonize more than three systems the uc would have alpha centauri soul and wolf the free star collective cheyenne voli and narion okay free star agreed and they had a uh, treaty. Oh, and then there was another conflict, the colony war. Oh, okay, we've heard about, sort of heard about the colony war. Okay. The Serpent's Crusade. Um, we saw those. Okay, so let's read through the Serpent's Crusade. Beginning in 2240, House Varun forces declared all-out war on the rest of human civilization, initiating the Serpent's Crusade. Over the next 23 years, thousands of Freestar, UC, and independent souls were killed by agents of House Varun in the name of their Serpent God. It was only with the death of their founder in 2263 and the succession of his heir, Jarek, that House Varun finally sued for peace. There remains, however, select members of House Varun who refused to recognize the cessation of hostilities their leaders established. Even after House Varun's mysterious disappearance, these zealots remain a threat to all who encounter them. Their pacification, a goal of all space. Hmm. Okay. Conflict among the stars. Wow, there's a lot here. Alright, this might take up the whole hour we got. Of the many conflicts between the galaxy's factions, None was more brutal than the recent colony war between the UC and the Freestar Collective. 
Set off by the unauthorized Free Star colonization of Vesta's Pride in 2308, a direct violation of the Nereon Treaty, the colony war spread quickly across the galaxy. Both sides deployed every tool at their disposal. Armadas of warships, mechanized combat platforms, or mechs. Even bioengineered alien creatures. The infamous UC Xeno weapons. Oh. It was only in 2311 at the Battle of Cheyenne that the scales finally tipped. The Free Star Collective, utilizing their civilian fleet as a human shield, successfully crippled the superior United Colonies Navy. After their shocking victory against the galaxy's greatest navy, the Free Star Collective offered terms of peace, which the colonies, out of an interest in staving off any further human costs, accepted. The galaxy has been rebuilding ever since. Omitting the verifiable facts about a conflict only ensures a repeat performance. Oh, this must be a mech. Wow. Yeah, the Xeno weapons. That was the first um, outpost we. Uh, where the pirates are. Uh, uh, I can't remember what it was called, but. Yeah, that whole f science facility was um, wrecked because one of them got loose. Something got loose anyway. One of the Xeno weapons. That's pretty cool. Um, Battle of Nera. Oh, this must be. Oh, you my. know it was some UC general that condemned Londinian? What? Gave it over to these things. One of these murals said he was executed after the war. Might have gotten off too lightly. All four of my last science papers have been on Terramorphs. Okay, let's, um... In the midst of the colony war, a different kind of tragedy struck the UC city of Londinian. Oh. A newly constructed but critical supply center for the United Colonies war effort, Londinian found itself overrun by one of the galaxy's most mysterious predators, the Terramorph. A rare but pervasive threat to all human settled worlds. Terramorphs swept over the city, seemingly out of nowhere, on a scale never before seen in recorded history. Valiant efforts by the UC military slowed the onslaught, but the creatures proved unstoppable. Ultimately, the decision was made to destroy the Londinian spaceport, sealing off the city. The outbreak and its citizenry from the galaxy at large. The tragedy of Londinian is mourned by the UC to this day. Okay, we missed one up here. The Battle of Mira? Few settled worlds were left untouched by the colony war. But nowhere could the viciousness of modern warfare be seen more clearly than on the Free Star planet of Nera. Initially occupied by invading United Colonies forces as a forward operating position, repeated attempts to take and retake the planet by collective forces led only to devastation. Swaths of the world were transformed into scorched husks, a nightmarish testament to the depths of human ingenuity and human cruelty. And today, Nera remains a continuing reminder to the horrors of unfettered war. I should visit that planet, Nera? I don't think we've visited I really yet. hope this is just a phase. One of my slates said Terramorphs can control people's minds. That can't be true. Hmm. Who knows? Maybe. Um, the 
the armistice. Okay, let's go. This After the devastation wrought by the colony war, the UC and the Freestar Collective came together to ratify a treaty that became known as the Armistice. Both sides agreed to a vast reduction in standing forces and that Xeno weapons and mech warfare would be outlawed. All related research was sealed away. Accessible only in cases of dire emergency. But the Collective had another demand. That the active commanders of the UC military stand trial for their actions. The United Colonies in the interest of peace and galactic security agreed. In 2311, three United Colony senior officers were found guilty. Commander Henry Durant. General Indira Rastogi and Fleet Admiral Francois Senon, known better as Vey Victus. All were sentenced to death for their actions, bringing the colony war to a close and returning peace to the galaxy at long last. It was a scary time, to say the least. The armistice was the only way we could survive. Until the next terrifying weapon, anyway. Hmm. This is the Armistice Treaty. Hmm. The Vanguard is born. Oh, a little bot. It's a little creepy, but the rest of the outfit looks okay. Uh, what's over here? The United Colony Citizens, okay. No one is born a United Colony Citizen. Only through service to the UC can one hope to earn one citizenship. Oh, really? Huh. But the UC prides itself on taking care of its people. Cost of living controls means citizens pay less than their foreign counterparts for needs big and small. All citizens are issued a grant upon joining to get themselves on their feet. And only UC citizens have the opportunity to purchase property, getting the chance to live in one of the most beautiful cities in the settled systems. By joining the Vanguard today, you too can begin earning your place here, in the heart of galactic civilization, as a citizen of the United Colonies. Vanguard Pilot Simulator. Yeah, the helmets are kind of creepy looking. Alright, let's go into and the simulator and show off my non-existent piloting skills. Probably should save here. <laughs> we have to redo it. Okay. Oh, yeah, whatever. Alright. Proceed to the Vanguard. Ooh. Stylish. Well, I like the little ones. Ooh, I want this one. It's like a little scout ship. All right, here we go. Welcome, applicant, to the piloting simulation chamber. 
please enter the designated simulation pod to initiate your exam. Wow. These things have gotten very high-tech. <laughs> Wild. Uh, okay, where am I supposed to go? Research lab. I guess we're going up here? I'm not sure. But just double check, make sure. Oh, I don't have anything. <laughs> That's why I can't figure it out. Alright. Alright. Let's uh, get the mission up and running. Yeah, it must be this one. A little coffee. Can I snoop around a little bit? Oh, there's a safe. Hello. Exam Proctor Samuel Samuelson. Ah, you must be our new applicant. I'm Proctor Samuelson. The simulator's already been prepped. You can head in whenever you're ready. <laughs> Piloting isn't my area of expertise. Can you just mark me down as a pass and I can head out? So what kind of ship am I going to be flying, flying in this simulation? The simulator is designed to be a near-perfect replica of a Class B Deimos hoplite. Oh. The United Colonies standard destroyer model. Oh. It's been tuned to provide a challenging but fair fight against the enemy squadrons you'll encounter inside. Great. So can you tell me about this exam? Of course. You'll be running through a high-realism combat flight simulation, engineered by members of the UC science staff right here in MAST. Your task is to defeat at least three tiers of simulated opponents. Accomplish that and you pass the exam and can then proceed on to your probationary mission. However, if you defeat more than three tiers of enemies, your required enlistment time for citizenship will be reduced and your enlistment bonus increased. But you're welcome to try as many times as you like before returning to Commander Tuwala to proceed on to the next step in your application process. We'll only keep the highest score you manage to achieve in there. Okay, so any advice? Well, I can't answer that question directly. I will say this. Due to the solitary nature of our work, resourcefulness is a critical tool in any Vanguard pilot's repertoire. You're permitted, even encouraged, to use whatever tool you're able to find in there. All right, then. Use any tool you find in there. Um... Okay, I'm going to go nose around a little bit. I know it said in there, but I wonder if, um... It's just coffee. I probably can't get into that. Master. Okay, quick paper. Oh, this is all stealing. Alright, my character isn't really into stealing right now. Battle sim. Oh, pain tolerance. Hmm. Toilet. Okay, I guess um probably isn't much out here to Alright. I'm nervous. I'm not very good at piloting. Do we even have a s I think I did put a skill in piloting. But I wasn't able to did I? Oh yeah, <laughs> I wasn't able to kill any ships because I kept getting blown up. Alrighty, um, alright, let's go. Flight Simulation Chamber Applicant, currently in orbit around a high-detail recreation of a remote world. When you're ready to begin, please take a seat in the pilot's chair. Simulation Controls. Welcome, app 
Applicant, please proceed to the pilot seat to initiate sequence. Debug tools are only available once targets are active. Please enter the pilot seat to begin examination. Um, hmm. That's the only thing that was out. I don't see anything else to play with except for that thing. But we have to start the simulation. I'm gonna have to go through this at least twice to figure it out. All right. Oh. Your exam cool. is simple. Defeat as many tiers of opponents as you can before your ship is disabled. You must defeat at least three tiers of opponents to pass the exam. Good hunting, applicant. I might as well put these up. New targets active. Oops. You must be able to do better than that. Am I locked on? Locked on. There we go. Targets defeated. Oh, okay. All targets eliminated. Progress recorded. Tier 3 reached. Congratulations, applicant. You've defeated sufficient opponents to pass the exam. You may now exit the simulator through the hatch to record your current score, or stay and try your hand at the remaining tiers. I want to try, maybe I can look at, um, can I do this now? What was this? Oh, one tier. Do you have, uh, advanced lock? Can I do this real quick? Yeah, this is probably going to take me forever because I... 
Eh. One probably goes there. This one seems to be a dud. Whoops. Maybe that one. I locked myself out. Yeah, of course I did. Uh, um. there. That's the second tier one. Um. Oh god darn it. I only have one left. Shoot. This one's here, right? That one's... That one's the inner one. Oh, I did it. Oh, infinite upgrades. Oh, yes, we're going to do that one. Let's just do them all. Oh, did it work? Debug ally. Infinite upgrades. Uh, did that work? Debug allies. Oh, all upgrades went up. Okay, cool. Oh, I think we can do it. Shield upgrade active. Damage upgrade active. Ally active. Resuming the examination. New targets active. Always forget that I don't need that much. Oh my god, this is... Target defeated. All targets eliminated. Progress recorded. Tier okay. 4 reached. Initiating Tier 5. Oh, I like this ship. It just goes to show how much the frontier is just up. New targets active. Halting Oops. simulation. You have passed, applicant. You may proceed to the exit hatch to log your results, or restart the exam from the simulation's control terminal. Did I die? I don't know what happened. All right, I'm done. <laughs> I only got to level four, but it's fine. All right, let's just do it. Uh, let's just Shut it down. Congratulations, applicant. You've passed. You can head up good showing in there, applicant. All right. Hey, Barrett. Let's go.
Yes? You needed something? Hello. Well, look who's back. Everything go all right with the exam? Or did you have some questions you needed answered first? Okay, I ripped up my pile of exam and they told me to come back here. Ah, so these are your numbers that just came through then. You ready to hear how you did? Yeah, sure. I'm ready. Then let's get to them. So, looking at the data, hit every mural in the orientation hall, huh? Yeah, it's cool. A test of preparation and thoroughness. To trace the Vanguard values highly. Cool. Psychological results are all within expected levels. Yeah, I'm not crazy. Navy doesn't have room for folks that'll fall apart the first time they're trying to outrun a homing missile. Okay. Oh, you found the debug system in the simulator. Nicely done. Curiosity and resourcefulness are skills our recruits need. Now, how'd you do against your foes? Not very well. Tier four. Not too shabby. The yeah, techs thanks. make us test each level of the sim too. I can tell you that way were some real artificial bastards. Good job putting them away. Way better than what I'd do. <laughs> I always mess up on the parking. So then, looking at your results as a whole, and factoring in that you managed to utilize all the tools at your disposal, once you've successfully completed your probationary mission, you could have your UC citizenship after only 10 years service. Pretty wow. standard for combat assignments. But your performance in the simulator does mean I can offer a signing bonus. Help convince you to join the cause. Ten years, huh? Well, good luck with that. Send me a postcard on Paradiso whenever you're done. Yeah. So, sounds to me like we've got Vanguard material on our hands. If you're interested, we could bring you on as a provisional member today. Get you the credits you've earned, then send you out on your probationary mission. Sounds like a plan. First, though. All UC service people, provisional or otherwise, are required to swear an oath. Of course they are. So, you want to make this official? Commit yourself to the cause of the colonies? Sure. Fantastic. Then just follow me. Oh. Where are you going there? Going to a real cer ceremony? All right. Wouldn't be right doing this where we couldn't see the stars. Now, raise your right hand. The motto of the Vanguard. Is supra et ultra, above and beyond. That is where we serve, beyond the furthest reaches of the United Colonies military, and with honor and duty above reproach. Do you swear to protect and defend the citizens of the United Colonies to the best of your abilities, and to uphold the values of the Vanguard, honor, loyalty, self-reliance in all your actions as a member of the United Colonies Navy? Uh, I, I do. Then let me be the first <laughs> to officially welcome you to the United Colonies Vanguard. Now, only thing Thank left you, is getting you that probationary mission. And what I've got is comms repair. Group trying to refurb an old colony war processing plan on Tau City 2. Sounds like they'd barely gotten set up when their communications died. Oh, weird. Place is as isolated as they come. So Brass wants a vanguard to deliver the repair suite and ensure anyone present is safe and secure. So, can the people of Tau Ceti 2 count on you? Uh, should I expect any trouble? No major settlements on Tau Ceti. No real active industry either. Doesn't make for a big target. It's got the potential <laughs> to be a pretty quiet trip. But there's a reason they wrote Here Be Dragons on the map edge. So if it were me... I'd hope for the best and arm for the worst. Gotcha. And if for some reason you do run into trouble, 
Don't forget, it's your job to protect those who need it. So, All right. you ready to head out? Let's do it. That's the spirit. Head down to the spaceport and talk to Crew Chief Harath. He'll get you the repair suite plus your new recruit kit. Oh, and your advance. Thanks. Give it your all out there. Supra et Ultra. Supra Need et something? Ultra. Hmm. Alrighty. Hey, Bear. Did I need to talk to you? I think you asked. Let's look at our missions. Power from beyond. Oh yeah, we should go check with uh, Vladimir and all that money can buy. Um, check. With, oops, we need to back out of it. Uh, we can grunt work. Um, so what was this? Speak to crew chief. Yeah, we can do that later. Um, I'll talk with Barrett. So Barrett wants to talk again. Since it's here, since he's here, we'll just go ahead and do it. Um, let's see, is there anything else we need to do under activities? I don't think so. I'll accept a cargo mission. I need a new ship. Use a hand scanner. I already did that one. Power from beyond. Okay, so we'll check with Vladimir. All that money can buy. All right, let's talk with Barrett, then we'll go talk with Walter. And then we'll go... Mantis, what's this? Maybe do up some of these blue missions. Get those out of, done and out of the way. All right, it sounds like a plan. Let's talk to Barrett and then talk to Walter. Hey, so I'm really enjoying our time together. Thought you should know. Oh, thank it's you, It's been Barrett. a long time since I worked with someone so closely. I didn't realize how much I missed it. And you haven't stopped me from looking into this stuff with Irvin either. So, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, why would I stop you? Well, there's a school of thought that you shouldn't go chasing ghosts. Oh, I see. And they're probably right. Ghosts are spooky. But maybe this isn't that kind of chase. And Irvin's case is far from dead. Hmm, okay. Hustler. I'm here for you, whatever you need. Thank you. It means a lot to know someone that you, well, care about feels the same. On that note, I do have some news about Irvin's case. Okay. So, I wanted to let you know that I heard back from my contact. And I think you'll want to hear this. Okay, go they ahead. They sent me a copy of some public records. It's interesting. There was a claim filed against Irvin, accusing him of damaging their investments. Looks like Irvin didn't even enter a plea. Uh... Who brought the case to court? The Hephaestus Mining Corporation. And they also won the case. Um... What was the settlement? Some of Irvin's paychecks were seized, as well as any assets that weren't under joint ownership. I don't understand how Irvin could be guilty of that. Well, if it was Irvin, I do want to understand that, because I just can't believe it. Anyway, this mining corporation, Hephaestus, sued Irvin claiming he irreparably damaged their mine. They said he killed the apex predators in the area around the mine, which led to herd creatures overeating the grasses. That caused the soils to release too many gases too fast, which cost Hephaestus a ton of money. That seems 
Hard to prove. Yeah, it looks like they considered him a no-show and ruled against him. So anyway, according to the court documents, there was a witness for the defense. Who was a no-show too? Then Hephaestus won by default. Oh, that's they tried to take weird. his apartment, but because it's in my name too, they couldn't. Uh, why didn't the witness show up? They withdrew their testimony the morning of the trial. Said they had a sincere change of heart. Uh, well, is your contact still available for work? Yes. They plan to stay in the same system for a while. Hmm. Did you know about the apartment before this? I didn't know he bought it. Must have been a better deal than renting for the time he was there. Hmm. Well, it sounds like the case is closed. That doesn't mean we can't do anything about it. And if yeah. nothing else, I just want to know more about what happened to Irvin. Yeah. So here's what I was thinking. I can persuade my contact to keep digging a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I don't want to press our luck, so I'll just ask them to follow up on one thing. Should I tell them to investigate the company more or look into the witness instead? can we find out by investigating the company? I just want to know why they picked Irvin. Why did they set him up? Okay, and the witness? I wonder what his real reason was for retracting his testimony. Did he report anything to security? Smuggler contact. Do we know it's a smuggler? You know what, go ahead and take the 4,000 and contact and pay your contact to investigate both of them. For that much money? <laughs> They'll do it. I hope so. You know, this, this investigation is, is time consuming, but it's also pretty cathartic. I'm glad. Uh, who knows? Maybe if we solve this case, it'll mean a better future for Gagarin. But that's thinking too far ahead. Anyway, Captain, thanks for checking in with me. No worries. All right, let's go talk to Walter. How much money I got left? I wanted a new ship. Oh, I'm not doing too badly on money. Okay, um, let's go check in with Walter and see what he wants to do. All right, where are Walter's over here? I think I can get there from here. It's very pretty light. I like the lighting. I guess they're cleaning it. <laughs> Let me try to figure out what's... I guess it was a... Uh, uh, must be some sort of water thing. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, it got drained of water. And Okay, what happened? There's a broken broom. <laughs> Wet floor. Couple broken blue brooms. Alright, someone was not having a good day. <laughs> they broke some brooms. Alright, let's go to uh, the lodge. place is a delightful relic tangled up with hope, grit, and science. <laughs> All right. Oh, that's looking pretty. I really thought you'd understand where I'm coming from, Sam. I just think you should give it a little more thought, okay? So, you don't think I can do it? I just think you should give it a little more thought, okay? All right. 
Well, let's see what she says. What are you guys talking about? Hey, you have a second? Sam and I were just having a, uh, discussion, and I wanted someone else's input. I think it's more accurate to say that you and I have now both been cornered, but sure. I'd like to, you know, get in shape, do some working out. So I asked Vladimir for some tips, and he basically said weightlifting was a bad idea. Are you sure that's what he said, or is it just what you heard? Anyway, so I wanted to get Sam's opinion on it, and he pretty much said the same thing. Okay, since now you've been fully roped into this, let's all just take <laughs> a step back. On? I had simply pointed out that if you take a look at Mateo, weightlifting isn't necessarily the first thing that comes to mind. I was wondering whether there might be a better option for him, and just sort of musing in general about the idea of sticking to things you're inclined to, versus going out and trying something completely new. Well, what's your take on it? You think it's better to stick to what you know, or to take any opportunity to try something that's maybe outside your comfort zone? Are we still talking about weightlifting here or something else? <laughs> um... Well, weightlifting is no joke. You have to be careful, or you could hurt yourself. I feel like maybe you dodged the question there, but okay. Also, I bet you ten credits Vlad said something similar. Of course I'd be careful! Anyway, thanks. I think I'm gonna try it. And don't worry, I'll be sure and ask Vladimir for pointers. Hey, we'll support you no matter what. Just don't want to see you get hurt is all. Yeah, I know. Thanks. <laughs> And maybe, if I need a spotter... Yeah, we'll talk about that. <laughs> okay, that was pretty funny. Okay, let's talk to Walter. Hey, Walter. I must admit, you've surprised me. I thought you were going to take off as soon as you'd gotten something from us. But I was wrong. I want you for a little soiree I'm planning. A soiree? Um, what are you up to? <laughs> a business meeting, of a sort at least. Okay. So, what do you, what do you need? Let's hear it. It's about an artifact. Okay. And our goal is simple. We're going to purchase it. Our seller is a freelance operative in the city of Neon, which means the artifact is almost certainly stolen from someone. I just need a little more presence in the negotiation to show we're serious. And I think you'd be perfect. I'm an explorer. Uh, <laughs> I'm actually a scientist, uh, not some muscle for a shady meeting. I hate to point out the obvious, but everyone in Constellation is exceedingly dangerous. Even the 12 year old. What? That's real. He's not joking. I know my request isn't what we usually do, but we all have our methods. I have connections and buying power. Why not use them? So what do you say? I just need a ride to Neon, we talk to a few underhanded operatives, and then we're back for evening drinks. Okay. Um, do we want to do this now? Neon, we haven't been to Neon. Um. Hmm. You know what? Let's go. Let's go to Neon. Yep, let's go. To the Volai star system, then. I admit I'm a little excited. Haven't we been to the Volai system? All right. We'll meet you there, Walter. I think this is a good place to pause. Uh... It's super pretty. Can't wait to get a new artifact. Well, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.